This dress, I think, has been Googled more times than any other look in history. Literally broke the internet when she wore it. So kind of cool to be a part of that history, but I wore it first. Hi Vogue, I'm Amber Valletta, and this is my life in looks. Oh, <gasps> that's my very first Vogue cover. It was with my best friend Shalom, and Bronna Wolf was the stylist, and Arthur Elgort was the photographer. I remember we shot this on the beach in Santa Monica with my freshly minted tiny short pixie hairdo. It was kind of the epitome of the waif. I had this kind of long fringe and shaggy, you know, short sides and my hair naturally curls and that's where you get the little flips. The haircut changed my career overnight and became sort of the haircut everybody had. Oh, <gasps> This is from my first Jill Sander fashion show. Jill Sander used me a lot. I loved working with her. She was just such an interesting, powerful woman ahead of her time and I did a few campaigns for her that were really cool. A couple with Peter Lindbergh. They were very like poetic and emotional and Peter really allowed me to express myself and so if I was you know moody or feeling strong or tough he let me kind of be that person. Let's see what the next one is. Oh boy the infamous Todd Holden show. <laughs> this is such a funny moment in fashion and I can see Miss Saucy thing coming up behind me in this image. Here she is. That's Shalom, and very soon she will take me over at the end of the runway in this image. What's funny is people do like to make this into a drama, which is hilarious to me because it was so not a drama. I don't know why I was walking so extra slouchy. Thank you, Miss Shalom. She was walking extra saucy. She was just on fire. She was feeling it. She was feeling that short skirt. All of a sudden was in front of me at the end of the runway, which obviously you don't normally do. We start walking back and I remember her saying to me like, keep up with me. So I'm like, you know, walking obviously as fast as I can because she's walking at a breakneck speed. And then she says, now turn. And so of course I listened because she was in charge and I, I turned. And it looks kind of fun and fabulous, I think. But I will say that day for some reason I was walking extra slow. And I'm going to blame it on the shoes. Oh, va va voom. There's moments I remember in fashion, especially at shows, you get kind of like the body chills when you walk out, you like know it's electric. I opened the show with this outfit and it just was like, you could just feel it. Tom Ford just, I don't know, he just hit a note here that like the hair, the makeup, the clothes, it was so different than what we had been seeing in fashion. It was still a play on the simplicity that we had been seeing, but he gave us kind of sex back, which I think we had been missing for a bit in the 90s. Ooh la la, Versace. This is one of many Versace shows. My first Versace show would have been in 93. I have had so many amazing years of work and collaboration with Versace. From working with Johnny in the beginning and being a little Versus baby and then working my way up to Versace and then working with them all the way through and then Donatella and doing so many campaigns together and having so many incredible iconic moments. I'm just really grateful and fortunate that I've been a part of their history and they've created such an important part of my history. Oh, I remember this. This is such a cool story. Now, I don't know if it still currently holds this record, but at the time, this dress, the, they called it the leopard dress, I believe, took more hours to make than any other dress in history. It was like over a thousand hours of artisanal work beading, and Carl was really proud of that. He, I remember he told me that fact. It was a really beautiful dress. I kind of felt like it looked like Cleopatra, but I love that it's called the leopard dress. 1993 is when I started, I think, working with Carl, and I did Chanel, I did Chloe, I did Fendi, I did uh, Karl Lagerfeld, and I just thought Carl was so magical and interesting and witty. He knew something about everything. I'm working with Karl Lagerfeld as their sustainability ambassador for the entire brand. It's an amazing journey to be still a part of the Karl Lagerfeld legacy. And I'm really lucky that we're doing something that's modernizing uh, the industry by being sustainable. 
Oh yeah, this is a beautiful image. This is Helmut Lang and Stephen Meisel shot this for American Vogue. Helmut Lang was super cool in the 90s. He was sort of the antithesis to everything that was going on, which was especially during grunge, there was a sort of ragtag feeling or hippie feeling and his idea of that was this more modern, structured, but there was an edge to it. He had a really strong point of view and his shows were really cool. We walked super fast and I probably gave Shalom a run for her money in that show. Prada, this was the first Prada shoot with Glenn Lutchford. This moment actually was shot on the Tiber River outside of Rome and the image is I think inspired by a film called Time of the Gypsies. And I remember they lit these little fires and I was in this little tiny boat and you have no idea what kind of impact an image is going to make. And this campaign in particular was another one of those really impactful, iconic moments in my career. And also I think for, for Prada, it struck a chord. Mm -hmm. She is a blonde biatch. I think this was like pinnacle of like fierce Versace sexiness, blonde ambition. It was just like Donatella, Donatella, Donatella. The infamous jungle dress. So I wore it in the runway, then obviously I did the campaign, and then JLo wore it to the Grammys. And Again, massive, iconic moment when she wore that dress. Nobody went out like that, ever. I mean, nobody had ever shown skin like in the front like that down, you know, past the navel and then big slit up the front. I think it was just so like ahead of its time and it just said, I'm woman and hear me roar, literally from the jungle. Oh, my baby boy. This is my Vogue cover shot by Annie Leowitz with my son Auden. He was the first child to ever be on American Vogue and I think the third male. He was so big, he was 18 months old and I remember people wrote in because they were so upset that they put a three-year-old naked child on the cover but he was only 18 months. It was a difficult shoot I have to say because he didn't really want to model, he wanted to walk and run around the property. I've worked with Auden quite a bit in my career, or he's worked with me I should say. We've been photographed over the years of him growing up. A really beautiful story with him with super long hair by Stephen Klein. Another one by Stephen Mizell, where everything was wrapped in plastic in my house. I think Auden thinks it's pretty cool to be on the cover of Vogue. Oh, Marion Antoinette. Anna asked me to come to the Met and she said, come up to the offices and we'll dress you. The part that's really important about this whole thing is she said, I really want you to go for it. And at the time, people were dressing to theme a bit, but it really wasn't like people really went for it. And I remember fashion people were kind of like, oh, you really went for it, or you look sort of like George Washington's wife. Just like kind of teasing me a little bit. And I was a little embarrassed that night, but I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna go for it and enjoy myself. I'm not saying that I influenced people to like go for it, but people did start going for it after that. This was one of the first moments of a big dress up for the Met. Hitch, what a fun film. Allegra Cole, she was a very sweet, trust fund society young lady with a heart. Working with Will and Kevin James and Ava Mendez was just so much fun. And working here in New York City, we got to be in places that, you know, normally people don't get to shoot. This is from the Met 2009 Model as Muse. This was a really cool Met because it was all about the models and we got to wear whatever we wanted. We all got ready together, which I think about it now and I'm just so grateful we got to do that. I picked this Galanos dress who was a famous American designer from the 50s and 60s and I just thought his stuff was so beautiful. Model as Muse is are part of the creative process in whether it's photography or a runway show, even just something like this, like the Met. It's our part in creating a fashion moment and we're often the muses. A really cool moment that connected the model as muse was in vogue for the May issue of that year. We did a photograph of all of 
us muses around one of our greatest collaborators, Stephen Mizell. This was closing the memorial show for Albert Albaz. Different designers did uh, their interpretation of Albert's clothes. They asked me to be the closing look. The bow tie I'm wearing was actually his bow tie. I just always remember him at the end of his shows kind of doing this sort of slightly three-quarter little bow with a little smile. I thought, I'll just do it slightly and see if anyone understands and gets the nod. It was kind of a way to say goodbye and thank you to him. And there it is in that moment. This was a really nice moment. I was giving the Environmental Sustainability Award to the UN from the CEFDA. And this beautiful woman pictured with me is Amina Mohammed, who is the Secretary Deputy General of the UN. And we were honoring them for their work in sustainability with the SDGs, which are the Sustainable Development Goals. And their guidelines for all of us, especially us in fashion, to follow to become a more sustainable and equitable industry. In the early 90s, I went to school here at NYU for politics of the environment. It's been a gradual learning process for me. It has inspired me to come back to work with a new passion and set of values that actually keep me in this industry because I want to see this industry change. And I also think that fashion has the responsibility and the ability to be one of the greatest change makers when it comes to environmental and social justice. Wow, it's incredible to close this life and looks with you with my most recent cover of Vogue. It's so exciting. We shot this in Paris not that long ago with Annie Leibovitz at the Grand Palais that was under major reconstruction and extremely cold. I got to be with Shalom, of course, Shalamber, reunited again. I'm so excited that they're honoring Karl Lagerfeld this year at the Met and I can't wait to see it all because it's, I mean, it's just gonna be incredible from, from Chanel, Fendi, Karl Lagerfeld, he has such a big history with fashion, and he was such a, an iconic man in fashion. So to honor him by having a cover and cover story solely about him and everyone's interpretation of him is just really special. And it's kind of full circle. And that's it for my life and looks as of now. I hope maybe we continue this book. Maybe we have more chapters ahead of us together. I loved the walk through memory lane with you all and I hope you enjoyed it too. And here's to many more. <laughs>